I learned to weld in high school in an ag shop class. John Fine was the shop teacher and he helped me by teaching me the basics of gas welding and stick welding. After high school, not too long after high school, I built a portable sawmill. I welded together 600 feet of channel iron and by the time I was done welding that sawmill together, I was pretty good with 6011 and 6013. I could kind of weld. Now fast forward a few years, I'm in Las Vegas working construction. They needed a welder. I said, I can weld. And sure enough, I went ahead and got one certification, 7018 rod in all positions up to three quarter inch plate. And so welding has contributed to my career both in sawmilling, in construction, and then later as a general contractor in Oregon in my projects and blacksmithing in a lot of different ways, it's been a real advantage. And on YouTube, we've done a couple videos about how welding could be an advantage for you. All electrical welding processes are creating an arc. The best way to learn to do something that you don't know how to do is to start doing it. Millermatic 210 is a great little machine. It's called a buzz box because it buzzes. Cut off the old bar, weld it on. A short, really, 225 amp max output. So I give you that little rundown about welding in my life with the disclaimer that I don't really consider myself a welder. I'm more of a, an all-around kind of a guy. But having said all that, I want to talk to you about the different kind of welders that you might encounter, and particularly this little green monster, and what kind of a surprise it's been to me to bring that into the shop and play with a little bit, and what I've learned playing with a welder that only weighs about 20 pounds. One of the real appeals to learning to weld with a stick machine is that stick welding is very basic, very intuitive. It's pretty easy to wrap your head around what's happening with the electricity. This little machine's no exception. In fact, it may be more intuitive than some of the older machines in that the polarity is reversed by simply reversing which lead goes into which one of the um, lugs. Pretty easy to understand and reinforces what's going on. It's either the work lead or the ground lead that's going into the positive terminal. So you can wrap your head around that easily and switch the polarity as needed. Spinning off of the really strong characteristic of this welder, which is it will run on either 240 or 120, those two options are very clearly spelled out right here with one little toggle switch. If you're running off 110, 120, let's call it 110, right? That's not technically right, but it's what people call it. The toggle goes to the, to the left. If you're running off 220, 240, the toggle goes to the right hard to mess it up. And then the amperage selector has two different um, indicators, two different circumferences, one for the 240, one for the 120. Hard to get confused. Beyond that, this little thing comes with a very readable and very understandable chart giving amperage settings, polarity settings, rod types, and rod sizes. Right where you can look at it while you're working instead of having to open a cover or turn around the welder to the back or something. That's all pretty good. But let me bounce back to what I just sort of glanced off of that is really the strong suit for this little welder. This is an adapter. I can plug that into the extension cord that comes out of the back of this machine and it'll plug into any 20 amp outlet in your house or in your shop. That's handy. You can run this thing anywhere. So that is a really strong and undeniable advantage, portability, and um, ambidexterity to plug into almost any power source. So the elephant in the living room with this little guy is that the duty cycle is terrible. The duty cycle is how long, what percentage of an hour or what percentage of a day will this machine weld without overheating and shutting itself off. The lower number is bad, the higher number is good. And the big pro level um, welders have a 100% duty cycle and, and through the typical range of welding amperage and settings. This little guy has got a 20% duty cycle up at the top end of its um, power discharge rating, right? I mean, that means that it will only run 20% of the time before it has to be, it'll shut itself off. It will shut off, cool down, and then you can go back to welding. But my analysis of that is, with eighth inch 7018, set at 155 amps, I ran about a four inch bead, 100% penetration through a quarter inch plate, 
and it didn't shut off. I even, where'd I put it? Now this is just a terrible bead. I had it maxed, 225 amps with eighth inch 7018, spattering an arc everywhere. I mean, it was a wild arc, it was hot, and it just kept running for three and a half inches. I stacked these beads in here with 7018 down around 70 amps. It never did shut off. So the duty cycle is short, but for a beginner or for light duty, it's certainly adequate. Does that make sense? I think it's reasonable for what it claims. So just to kind of wrap this up, for a beginner or a hobbyist, jump on it. I mean, it's not gonna hurt you. It's gonna do your work. For a pro or for a contractor like me, I've got a couple projects where I'm gonna use this as a go-to tool. I've got a gate out behind the shop that's gotta be repaired. I'm not gonna load up my miller. I can't take the Lincoln out there, so I'm just gonna pick this up, run about a 75-foot extension cord out there and weld the gate. That's handy. I'm also gonna use it to repair a little Peter Wright anvil. Just because I can, it seems to run smooth, and repairing an anvil requires short beads, so the duty cycle is not gonna bother. You're gonna see this in the spec house from time to time when I start mobilizing on the railings that I'm gonna blacksmith, because it's just so convenient. I can pick it up, I can put it on the front seat of the truck if it's raining outside. I can carry it into the house, up a ladder. I mean, even an old man can move this around. And when you get to be an old man, that's a consideration. Now, the thing that I have to point out, because if I don't, somebody's gonna be really disappointed, and that is this. The ground clamp and the stinger are junk. 50 pounds of rod and these things are going to be rags and replaced. I don't know how it's gonna work, the actual ferrule that plugs into the machine. Hopefully that'll hold up. I don't know what's going on inside of here. It feels like it's smooth and is dealing with the current just fine, so maybe that'll hold up. But by the time I've thrashed these and they've fallen apart in my hands and I put different ones on there, you know, this might just be all right. And in the meantime, today, just looking at 6013, 7018, in 330 seconds and eighth inch, can't complain, does the job. Thanks for watching Essential Crafts. Keep up the good work. I had the other day.